Are we ready to begin? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good afternoon and welcome to this online hearing of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Ottawa. The Committee of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial tribunal appointed by City Council to make decisions on certain types of applications under the Planning Act. My name is John Blatherwick, and I'll be chairing this hearing today. With me are my fellow panel members, Bonnie Oakshaw, Stan Wilder, Heather McLean, and Michael Wilder. Please take note that this video conference is being live streamed on YouTube. The video will be archived along with today's agenda on the city's website. Before we begin, we have a few items to outline for your information. While the issues surrounding development in the city are broad, our mandate is quite limited. The committee cannot consider aspects of the proposal that are not related to the required variances, noise, pollution, property maintenance, property values prosecution for illegal construction, personal comments regarding neighbors, agents, or applicants, and additional variances without proper public notice. If there is an identified need for an additional variance or variances, including an increase in the extent of the relief required, a recirculation of the application is required. As part of the statutory Notification requirements, each applicant was required to post a sign on the property and file a statutory declaration confirming the sign posting. I don't believe we have any of those. So what I'm going to have to do is issue an oath or solemn declaration to all applicants and agents before we can proceed with their, uh, with their application. In terms of the hearing process, listed on the agenda and appearing on the screen are the applications we will hear today. For the sake of efficiency, the committee may deal with these items in a different order. Note that the committee members have reviewed the application materials prior to this hearing and any written submissions received in support or in opposition. In addition, the committee will hear today oral submissions from any interested parties as part of our proceedings. The committee may ask for a brief presentation by the applicant, followed by questions from the members where clarification may be needed. The public submissions portion of the hearing will then begin and any interested parties will be invited to make their submissions to the committee. Panel members may then ask follow-up questions where additional clarification may be required. When you are called upon to provide your comments, we would ask you to do the following. Start with stating your name and municipal address for the record. We may ask you to spell your name. Then begin your submission by addressing your comments to the panel members. You may ask questions, but please direct them only to the chair. Please limit your comments to a maximum of five minutes. Any exceptions will be at the committee's discretion. Once all interested parties have had an opportunity to address the panel, the public submissions portion of the hearing will then be closed. The committee will then make an oral decision to either grant or deny the application. The committee may also choose to reserve its decision. In such case, the panel will deliberate further on the evidence presented immediately following adjournment of the public hearing. In either case, the committee will send within 10 days of its decision and to all the parties and those who have requested it, a written notice of decision that sets out the reasons for the decision. All decisions of the committee are subject to a 20 day appeal period during which the decision can be appealed to the Ontario Land Tribunal for a fee. Before we begin, are there any declarations of interest to any of the members today regarding items on this agenda or the uh, agendas of panel two or panel three? Seeing none, okay. Uh, we have two sets of minutes to confirm. We have the minutes from August 3rd, 2022, and the minutes of August 17th, 2022. Regarding the minutes of August 3rd, 2022, any modifications needed to be made to these minutes as presented to us? No, all in favor of adopting these minutes as presented? And in the matter of uh, the minutes of August the 17th, 2022, again, any changes uh, needed to be made to these minutes that were presented to us? No, all in favor of adopting these minutes as provided. Okay, the minutes are adopted, thank you. And we'll now move on to adjourned items. Items up for adjournment. And we have one of those today, items one and two on the, uh, on the agenda, uh, one or 19A and 19B Garland Street. These are consent and minor variance applications to subdivide the property to two parcels for the existing long semi-detached dwelling with reduced parking space length for both units. 
I believe Mr. Paquette is the agent for the applicant. Uh, yes, I am, as well as my colleague, Chris Davis. I'm here as well. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Paquette, I understand that there's a uh, request for, a, uh, for an, an adjournment on this because there's an additional variance nest needed and there are uh, issues with uh, running services across several slides. Do you want me to answer, That's Adam? Uh, yes. Go yeah, ahead. so we have, we have, the two units have independent services, um, but in the application, we said that the front unit would own parts three and four. Okay. However, the rear unit should own part four, uh, under which their services run, just so that they don't cross any severance lines. So that will have to modify, plus there's an additional variance regarding the flag lot, I believe. Yeah, so when we, re when we give independent ownership to parts three and four, it means that we don't quite meet the... Um, the width requirement for the flag or for the pole on the uh, flagpole lot. Right. So the city's responded that um, they don't have a concern with that, but it does technically require a new variance. All right. Well, recirculation. I think best. Yeah, we're going to have to recirculate. So I think the best thing for us to do is to adjourn the signy die, and we'll see you back here shortly. Perfect. All in favor of adjourning the application, signy die. Our application is adjourned. See you shortly. Thank you. Thank you. That was the, that's the end of the adjournments. Before we get to the regular agenda. Um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, we received an additional adjournment request. Uh -huh. This one relates to items seven and eight, four, two, four, Avondale. Okay. And the agent is uh, Jessica Dau. All right, hang on one second. Let me just pull this. Ms. Dau. You have an adjournment request regarding uh, item seven and eight for 24 Avondale. Hi, good afternoon. Sorry, I was having some audio issues. I'm the um, authorization for this application. And you're requesting an adjournment? Yes, that's correct. We'd like to request an adjournment for this application until the September 21st hearing. Um, Friday afternoon, we received um, some comments that we would like to have additional time to address. In particular, there was a comment received from Bell Canada requesting um, an easement across the rear of the property. And this is relatively unusual. So um, with Monday being a holiday, we've attempted to reach Bell Tuesday and Wednesday, but have had no response back. So we would like some additional time to be able to speak with them. Um, as well as deal with um, some conversations with the forester, with Nancy Young, regarding an updated tree information report. Okay, so you figure that this can be this can be handled. Or we can deal with this on the twenty first of September, and all matters will be resolved. That's correct. Yeah, we've um, confirmed that with Nancy. Um, the conversations with Bell is a matter of just clarifying um, their request, but we're of the opinion that the requested easement would be unnecessary, and we're not inclined to agree to it anyways. But we want to have that conversation with them as well. Mr. Mr. Bill Meyer, do we have room on the twenty first of September agenda for this ap application? Yes, we do, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you, Ms. Dau. All in favor of adjourning this application until the 21st of September to resolve the issues around it. All right, we'll see you on September 21st, Ms. Dau. Thanks very much. Okay. Okay, Okay. All right. Before we proceed to the agenda, um, the committee has reviewed item 10, 480 McLaren Street. This is a permission application to add, add um, several more rooming, rooming units to an existing rooming house. Um, and the committee is curious as to why this permission application is, is needed. Um, and I believe the planner on this is Mr. Hamilton. Mr. Thank Hamilton, you, Mr. Chair. Can articulate the department's requirement for a permission application, expand this rooming house internally? Certainly. The rooming house is not a permitted use on the property. Uh, the applicant is looking to expand it by increasing units by two. They're adding two additional units. Uh, because it is a legal non-conforming use, the additional units do constitute an expansion uh, and therefore require a permission application. 
Okay, and I, I believe there's a there's a risk, an exception on on this pro on this on the zoning bylaw regarding this as well. There is. It's I don't believe it's related to the use that's proposed. I I think it was just um, uh, regarding a dwelling unit, if I'm not mistaken. And Ms. McLean, you've had some concerns regarding their the need for a permission application. Are you satisfied with the answer from the planning department? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wondered if the, if the applicant had sought legal advice on the need for this application, because it's my understanding that there's case law that allows you to expand a legal non-conforming use within the confines of the existing building. Hi there. Um, yeah. I'm, Your name and address for the, uh, for the record, please. Hi there. Yes, Mike Imason. And my address uh, is 203 Kinlock Court, Ottawa, Ontario. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, getting a uh, specific answer on the uh, requirement of a permission application was difficult to find. I did speak with a couple lawyers. They couldn't confirm. I spoke with Craig and his suggestion was to go in this route. I, I did speak with the cup. I spoke with the city of Ottawa um, rooming house committee or the division. Um, they were okay with it as long as it met building code. Um, so it seemed like this was the only way to proceed. Um, and this is the path that we ended up going down. I'm wondering, wondering whether or not we should adjourn the application and let the applicant get some written legal advice uh, on, on the need for this application and, and have it submitted to the committee. I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Klein, Mr. Wildman. Thank you, Chair. I, I agree with uh, Ms. McLean. I, I also think that it's probably appropriate for uh, Mr. Hamilton to do the same. Um, and uh, the particular case uh, that uh, Ms. McLean is speaking uh, about should be uh, cited as, as uh, something for consideration. Um, you know, I, I understand that if you can't get an answer, it would be uh, probably prudent to, to just run it through the process. But uh, our sense is it's probably not required based on case law. Uh, and uh, with that with that as a matter of law um, being the case, then um, we don't think that this committee should be uh, should be dealing with this. Um, so with that, um, you know, I'll leave it like that. Uh, Ms. McLean, did you want to? Pass along the 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 um, the uh, case law that uh, that you you were referring to. Uh, yes, unless something's changed in the interim, it was a central Jewish um, case that went to the Supreme Court, where I believe it was ruled that the uh, legal nonconforming use could expand within the um, the uh, interior of the building as of right. Okay. So, Mr. Imason, yes, you've heard the uh, you've heard the committee. Um, um, Frank, frankly, yeah. I think we'd probably be best if you got us a legal a legal opinion, and the planning department can do the same. Whether or not we actually should be dealing with this matter, or whether you have a right to do what you're going to do anyway. Okay. Um, and Ms. McLean, would, would it be possible to um, reference that somewhere in writing so I could share that with a lawyer to have them review it? Ms. McLean? Well, it was, if you just take a note that it was the central Jewish case, I'm sure um, uh, any real estate lawyer would, uh, would be able to find the case and, and, uh, and read it and give you an opinion on it. Thank you. Okay. And right. if this process isn't required. It certainly is a, a large process to go through to add within the building. So uh, if I do get um, legal advice that requires or confirms that I don't need to do this, what would be the next steps? Well, you won't be dealing with us. Just getting a building code and or getting a building permit and going through that process? Yep. yep. And once I get it in writing, do I confirm back to a coordinator? Um, yes, you can, confirm, you can confirm back to us and withdraw your application. Okay. Um, how long do you think you would need? 
Um, or should we adjourn this sine die to give you sufficient time? Well, I could probably get legal advice within a, a week or so um, at the end of next week. So <clears throat> would you be prepared to move forward or, or to, to have an answer for us before the 21st of September, which is our next hearing? Uh, yeah, I, it also that works within my timeline as well. So I would want to have an answer by prior to the 21st for sure. Okay. So I think what we'll do is, Mr. Wildman. Um, sorry, Mr. Chair. I just thought uh, perhaps uh, what could happen is uh, before returning to committee, uh, Mr. Hamilton, after consulting with uh, city legal staff, could have that discussion uh, with uh, Mr. Imason and just make sure they're on the same page because the last thing we would want is for them to be at odds uh, and the city not agreeing with it and still feeling that uh, such permission is required. So I think as long as they're both on the same page, I think that would be the, the, the most prudent way to go. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Wilder, Mr. Mr. Wilder. <laughs> no, I agree with Mr. Wilder, uh, uh, Mr. Wildman, sorry. Um, uh, Craig, Mr. Hamilton, if you could check with Tim Mark or a member of the uh, legal branch um, to see uh, if he could check um, you know, he's pretty up on these things. If he could check on this uh, Supreme Court case that uh, Heather mentions, and because I'd like to get a, a, a not only from Mr. Imason's lawyer, but I'd like to get a, a legal opinion from uh, our uh, planning branch as well, our legal staff. Thank you. Okay. So, sorry, that... Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. The, the legal department does not report to the committee, so they won't be giving us a legal opinion. They'll be giving Mr. Hamilton the opinion, right. and it'll It'll be up to Mr. Hamilton to, to do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we'll uh, tentatively adjourn this till the 21st of September, and we may not see you at all. Okay. All right. All in favor of the adjournment? All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Now move to the rest of the agenda. Hmm. The application we have before us is item three on the agenda, 574 Edison Avenue. This is a minor variance application to permit a reduced interior side yard setback for the construction of semi-detached dwelling, a semi-detached dwelling <clears throat> with secondary dwelling units. And the agent for the applicant is Ms. Hill. Ms. Hill. You solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. Yes, I do so swear. Okay. So this is, uh, this is a pretty simple application. I don't think we need a presentation on this. Uh, how does it satisfy the, uh, the four tests, myself? Well, it's minor in the sense that it's already what we're asking for. The, the side yards that we're asking for is a predominant existing pattern neighborhood. Um, it's a small amount dimensionally that we're asking for. Um, it, it is appropriate and desirable to have a nice semi built in that location with a functional garage, which is the, the result of the variance. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, the bylaws, um, the bylaw didn't, um, the, 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 the side yard wasn't put in place in order to make garages unreasonably narrow. It was intended to allow for garbage to be moved from the rear yard to the street when small apartment buildings were constructed. But this isn't a small apartment building. The garbage is in the garage. So we just don't need that much side yard. Um, so I think we're meeting intent of the bylaw um and uh and the uh, official plan uh the existing official plan is uh, certainly promoting uh, semis in this location okay. 
Thank you, Marcel. Any questions from the uh, comments from the members of the panel? We note that the uh, that the planning department has no concerns with the application of any other any of the other authorities, and that there are no conditions being requested. All right. In the matter of this minor rights application to permit to reduce interior side yard for the construction of a semi-detached dwelling with a secondary dwelling unit at 574 Edison, all in favor of the application as presented. Your application's approved. Good luck with your project, Ms. Hill. Thank you. Now move to item number. Oh. Just filling these a little bit. Item number nine on the agenda, which is 208 210 Cowley Avenue. I believe the, uh, this is a uh, a consent application to subdivide the property into two separate parcels and one half of the semi-detached dwelling on each parcel. And the agent for this application is Mr. Robinson. Is he there? I'm here. And your address for the record, Mr. Robinson. 100 Palomino Drive, Ottawa, Ontario, K2M, 1N3. Uh, I'll administer the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time. I do swear that to be true. All right. So this is, uh, this is a subdivision request, which is, uh, you know, it has the, uh, the, the support of the Champlain Park Community Association, um, the Planning department has no concerns with the requested severance. Um, forestry, it's okay right away, people. Transportation engineering services um, has some comments that I think you're aware of, Mr. Robinson. Yes, I am. Okay. There are three conditions, independent services, uh, a joint use and maintenance agreement, and forestry has uh, re requested a, uh, a tree planting plan. Yes. Yeah. We notice it. We note that there was a revised planning report dated September sixth, which was uh, which 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 is correct for part one and part two uh, lot areas. But the uh, the information that was on the sign that was posted on site was correct. That is correct. Okay. Any questions or comments regarding this consent application from the members of the panel? In the matter of. 208 210 Cowley Avenue, a consent application. All in favor of the consent. Consent's granted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Next application will deal with is item 11 on the uh, on the agenda, 38 Adelaide Street. Mr. Chair, sorry yes. to interrupt. The agent does not appear online. If we can step this down, I'm trying to oh, contact. Okay, the agent. I'll put it back. I'll put it back in the order. No problem. Thank you so much. I'm just trying to get the. All right. All right. So. I'll move to item number number four on the agenda. This is uh, <clears throat> 12 West Prestland Road. It's a minor variance application to permit an increased footprint for a new coach house. The committee dealt with this application uh, 
in June and dismissed the application, determining that it, the application failed on all four tests that we are required to uh, assess applications by. So, oh, the, um, the agent for this application is Mr. Bisson. Is he there? Mr. Bisson. Good afternoon. My name is Eileen Bisson, and my address is 1886 Maryville Road in the PNC. Okay. Before we begin, <clears throat> administer the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? I do swear. Okay. All right. Um, as I've already noted, we, uh, we rejected this application earlier this year. Um, and you're back before us again with a very similar application. So exactly what is the difference between this application and the one we did not approve? So from this previous application, we reduced the height to be compliant. Uh, we were originally asking for a height increase as well as a footprint increase. Um, so we redesigned the roof to comply with uh, the bylaw requirements. And the second request was the footprint size in relation to the house. And we also relocated it from the Eastern lot line to the Western lot line to have it more concealed in line with the existing dwelling on the lot. We have a schematic for that that shows where you wish to put the, this coaches. So we have a presentation uh, pulled together to compare the two applications. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Um, as mentioned, it's a one-story, two-bedroom coach house with a concrete foundation, and the relief requested for this application was an increase in footprint size. Uh, next slide, please. This is the uh, diagrams from the pre previous application. So we had a high increase above the 3.6 meter requirement and the past site location was on the Eastern lot line behind 20 West Presland. Next slide, please. Um, just to go over the lot, there's a mixture of one to two story dwellings on the North and South side of Presland. There's also some three to four story low rise apartments uh, on the South side. Next slide, please. Um, the existing dwelling is a two-story duplex. Um, there is a two-car garage that is planned to be removed. Uh, but other than that, we're not proposing any alterations to the right-of-way access or any of the laneway. Next slide, please. And this is our proposed site. So we have relocated the coach house on the Western lot line, which will impact one of the neighboring trees. Um, it's a white pine with a breadth diameter of 50 centimeters. We did get written approval from that property owner for its removal. And as a result of removing it, we're going to propose uh, two tree plantings on the lot, as well as sourcing the third tree for an off-site planting at the city's discretion. Uh, uh, next. Out of curiosity, that, that tree is, that's on the, uh, on the neighbor's property, is that tree healthy? It's not right now. Currently, that property is being used as a, an apartment, and they do have rear yard parking. And we have a tree information report that the arborist may note that the decline of health may have to do with the use of the rear yard. So it, it's currently not in healthy uh, state. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here's a quick overview of. Um, the reasoning for the footprint size. So we're proposing a two bedroom coach house. Um, the primary use would be for the property owner's daughter, uh, her husband and a newborn baby they just have. So it's for a growing family. 
And um, in terms of the basement extension that we're proposing, that will be used for recreational and storage space as well. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here's a brief overview of uh, the elevations. We're proposing horizontal siding uh, as a material. Next slide, please. Uh, here's an overview of the um, footprint sizes. So as mentioned, the increase in size is related to the primary dwelling. Um, as with the bylaw requirements, 40%, we're proposing 65.2%. Uh, but in comparison to the rear yard coverage, as this is not a typical lot, the rear yard coverage is only 10.57% uh, for a footprint of 80 square meters. Next slide, please. So in relation to the four tests, we do find that this is minor when we compare the footprint of the size of the addition or the coach house to the lot size. Um, we do find it desirable and appropriate use of the property considering the types and height of developments in the area. Um, the site location is appropriate to not alter the streetscape of the neighborhood. From the previous application, um, it was mainly visible from the street and the new location that we are now proposing the existing dwelling is going to help conceal some of the development from the street. Um, we do find it maintains the general intent and purpose of zoning as the footprint is still below the maximum permitted size of 80 square meters when compared to a 40% lot coverage or in relation to the house. Uh, and the proposal to remove the tree is following the tree protection bylaw requirements. Um, we also think the general intent and purpose of the initial plan, plans are met, considering that this is going to provide affordable housing options for new family that are looking to purchase their first home. You talked about purchasing the first home? You can't sever this well, one. No, we're not severing it. It's um, living like uh, options without being like it's for the family the property owner's daughter it's their first home they're a growing family um so the intent is for them to live in this space to raise uh, their newborn child all right so basically what we have here is the same size footprint uh moved to a different location on the lot and, and slightly lower to meet slightly lower to slightly lower in height to meet the height requirement by law that's correct Okay. All right. Ms. McLean, you have a question, comment? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I wonder if I could ask city planning staff, um, is the 40% uh, uh, restriction for the size of the coach house uh, related to the lot area or is it it's, it's tied to the size of the existing home that's on the property? Through you, Mr. Chair, if I'm not mistaken, there are three requirements um, in calculating the floor area that's permitted for coach houses, and we take the lesser of the options. Um, I believe one of them is in relation to the lot size, and then the second most applicable would be a percent of the floor plate of the home. Um, in this instance, we're using the home. Okay. I don't, I'd find Ms. McLean. Okay. Uh, Mr. Wildman, you had a question or comment? I uh, just wanted to hear from Ms. Young uh, briefly. Uh, Ms. Young, uh, you, you heard the commentary on the uh, tree on the abutting property and the solutions. Uh, do you have any concerns with that or, is, or are you comfortable with what you heard? Thank you for the question. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I do find it odd. Uh, there is room on the site to build this and not impact the tree um, but they do have permission from the neighbor um, so I mean it is following the bylaw if the neighbor doesn't want the tree then technically there's no issue it's just odd that it's removing a neighbor's tree um, so if there can be tree planting instead then um, that is okay is there a is it, curiosity, Miss Young? Is there a, is there a guarantee that that tree will be a permit will be issued for the removal of that tree? Um, 
I guess not a guarantee, but certainly um, my comments and the information from this hearing will be shared with the forestry department. So they wouldn't sorry, really have a reason not sorry, to. Sorry, Mr. Wildman. <laughs> I thought you were done. Well, yeah, that, I was sort of going in that direction a little bit. Um, so just to be clear, Ms. Young, it, a permit is required to remove that tree, even if the, okay, so we can impose that as a condition if we, if we wanted to. Um, if, yeah, we want, except, if we were so inclined yeah um, except this isn't a consent right so. um a good point uh the other thing is the 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 three i think you said three trees being planted have you been engaged in any discussion there or is that is this the first you've heard of it or where are you on that we have had some discussion on that uh i don't think we have a plan yet for where those trees would go but um it sounds like they are willing to provide that and that will be required for the permit as well. So right. even aside from the committee okay. process. All right. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, Ms. Sok Thank you, Mr. Chair. Could we put the site plan back up, please? So my question will be for Mr. Hamilton. I believe the intent of the definition of a house is that the uh, footprint be subsidiary to the footprint of the, the actual home. And just looking at this site plan, it doesn't appear that way to me. So I'm wondering if you have any additional comments. You, Mr. Chair, yes. The requirement for the floor plate would be a little bit less than half of the existing principal dwelling. Um, in our review, we are looking at the lot size, the impact to amenity space, um, as well as the density that would be incurred uh, through the introduction of the coach house. And, and for that reason, we don't have any concerns, just largely due to the lot size and types of dwellings that are around the subject property. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions, Ms. Luke Cheryl? All right, uh, Mr. Bisson, I'm just looking at the application here. Um, we've dealt with forestry. We've dealt with the planning department. Uh, you're aware of how, you're aware of um, Hydro's comments. Yes, I am. Okay, and uh, a, a standard comment from the right away people regarding private approach, private approach permits required. Actually, yes, I'm aware of their comments as well. Okay. All right. My concern with this application is we're basically rearranging the chairs, on, the deck chairs on the Titanic. And I'd like to, uh, quite frankly, I'd like to reserve on this application so that the committee can further discuss the evidence presented to us. So one thing I also want to mention is that we have been in discussion with the neighbors. Um, I just want, I felt it's, uh, it should be made a, knowing that we spoke with the neighbors and they have uh, full support for the project. Yeah, well, and you're also in, uh, I would imagine you're in, uh, you're in receipt of our decision from uh, June. And the re and in there is the rationale why we turned this, turned this down on all four tests. So we will reserve on this application, Mr. Bisson, thank you very much for your input and uh, you'll be hearing from us uh, but you're beginning our decision within 10 days. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, come here. Now let's speak to that one. Mr. Chair, hmm? sorry, I just wanted to let you know the agent for item 11 is now in attendance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and that's what we'll call in. We'll call item, item 1138 Adelaide Street. This is a minor variance application to permit a reduced lot width for a new detached dwelling with a secondary dwelling unit. And this was originally on our uh, on our adjournment list today, but there's a revised report 
that uh, the uh, department can articulate uh, so the, 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 and ask the, the department to articulate the uh, rationale for their changes and why uh, why we no longer need a uh, an adjournment on this application is um Ms. Linker there yes mr chair thank you uh the adjournment request was originally requested because the applicant did not provide a streetscape character analysis however that was provided this morning and Upon review, it was uh, concurred that the streetscape character analysis uh, confirms a single wide driveway is permitted on the subject site. And I'm, I'm assuming that the need for an extra variance is no longer there as well. That is correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, all right. All right, the agent for item, item 11 is Bing Feng Li. Are you there, sir? Can't hear you. Can't hear you, sir. Hello. Hi. Right. Yeah. Could you give us Hi. your uh, your address for the record, please? Uh, the address for application is uh, thirty eight Adelaide Street, Ottawa. And your this is your address for for our records. Uh, my address is uh, Unit uh, Two Hundred Four, uh, One Fifty Cadet Week. Okay. So this is a, var a variance application to permit a lot reduced lot width for new detached dwelling with a secondary dwelling unit. Yes. Um, the department no longer has any concerns. Oh, and their uh, th their concerns have disappeared regarding the single wide driveway on site. Um, you're aware of for the forestry department's comments about the uh, construction impacting a privately owned tree on the property. Uh, yes. They're, they're Oh, sorry, I have to administer. Sorry, I forgot. I'm going to administer the oath. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? Yes. Okay. So, forestry is uh, forestry raised some concerns, and I'm assuming you're aware of those concerns. And we'll uh, and we'll uh, cooperate with the department regarding mitigation measures around that tree. Yes, we have a tree report submitted. Uh, th there are two trees there. We're gonna we can keep these trees as is during construction. We're gonna pro provide pro protection for those yeah. two trees. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So this. How do these? Uh, how does this application meet the requirements of the four tests of the Act, Mr. Mr. Lee? Yes. So, uh, you want to present how these uh, minor variants are gonna apply comply with the four test? Yep. Okay. So the four test, the first test is the general intent and the purpose of official plan is maintained. So the subject property is uh, is part of the, part of the general urban area by the city of Ottawa official plan. So policy of general urban area permit a development of full land, full range and choice of housing types and densities. So yeah. official plan encourage opportunity for residential intensive intensification to meet city target through infill or development. So existing official plan identifies the second dwelling unit as appropriate form of affordable housing. So this passed uh, the first uh, screening of the test, number one. So the number two is the general intent and the purpose of the zoning by law is maintained. So the second dwelling unit is permitted in any detached, link detached, semi-detached, or even townhouse dwelling, so in any zoo. So this passed the second, uh, second testing of the uh, four test screening. So the third one will be variance uh, desirable for appropriate development and use of the property. So the uh, we we look at on the jail Ottawa on uh, Adler Street. So there are several undersized parcel along the street, which uh, that, uh, doesn't comply with a lot of width provisions, such as 37, 41, 43, 47 uh, address. So uh, this is uh, illustrate the subject lot is not is compar comparable to other properties along the street and not out of character. So this uh, comply with the third uh, testing of the screening. 
So the last one is um, is a variance uh, variance is minor. So the proposed dwelling unit will be located within the basement, and will utilize the separate entrance on the side of the building uh, property. No additional parking is required for second dwelling unit. So that's uh, uh, identify these uh, minor variants will comply with uh, for testing screening. Uh, we note that there are no conditions that are being asked for. Um, but the, uh, <clears throat> the plan department is in, the, in support of the application. You're going to satisfy forestry. There are standard comments from Ottawa Hydro regarding contact them for more information. Yes. And uh, right away, people, there's, again, their standard comment, a private approach permits required if you're going to put another driveway in. Um, any questions or comments from the members of the panel regarding this application? All right, so in the matter of uh, 38 Adelaide Street, a minor variance application permit a reduced lot width for a new detached dwelling with a secondary dwelling unit. All in favor of the application as presented. Okay. Your application's approved. Good luck with your project. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, very much Eric, guys. You're very welcome. Next application on the agenda today are items five and six, 674 and 676 De L'Eglise Street. These are consent and minor variance applications to subdivide the property into two separate parcels for two new three unit dwellings with redu reduced lot areas and lot widths. And Mr. Robinson is the agent for the applicant. Mr. Robinson, again, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? I do swear that to be true. Okay. And your address for the record again, please. 100 Palomino Drive, Ottawa, K2M, 1 in 3. Okay. Um, you're aware of the comments from the planning department and from forestry? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, you're also, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, aware of the comments from, uh, from neighbors uh, who are in uh, opposition to your application? Yes, I am. Okay. So I, we need, you need to uh, address, address the neighbor's concerns. We also have... Uh, Two of the neighbors who are a late addition is to the speaker's list this afternoon. They may wish to speak. They may not. So okay. If uh, first of all, Mr. Robinson, I'm, I, when I was reviewing the app, reviewing the materials, I was looking at the elevations. Uh, those two dwelling units look like four unit apartment buildings, each of them, and yet you're describing them as triplexes. Yes, the basement has got a, a recreational room for the for the uh, uh, each of the, the tenants in the building, and has also got uh, storage and utility rooms um, in in the basement. Um, the same owners group have built or got approval for uh, construction of a similar uh, building. Um, it was done, I think, late last year or early 2022. It was a panel two application. And uh, the basement in that and on this uh, development is uh, not intended to be a uh, unit. If that was to be a unit, it would be then a low rise apartment and the scale of the variance request on the lot width and lot area would be greater. Yes, but I was <clears throat> gonna say that there have been different set of, uh, system set of parameters in place. This is a mm -hmm. building. Okay, please proceed, Mr. Robinson. Thank you. I do have a presentation uh, document at the, Committee chairman could share it. Thank you. Okay. Next page, please. So the application before you is to sever the, the parcel of land, which is shown in the, uh, the black uh, outline um, into two parcels equal in size along the red uh, line and the uh, triplex units are in the uh, green outline. There is an existing house on the property uh, the address is 674 de l'Eglise. 
it is a through lot, so it does go from De La Glise to uh, Regis Avenue at the rear. The proposal is for a, a triplex on each lot with a single car, uh, a driveway leading to a single parking space on each uh, of the two lots. Uh, and that would be accessed from the rear uh, on Regis. And then um, there is a uh, pathway between the front and the back. The front wall of the building is facing De Glise, and there are balconies um, facing De Glise. Um, next um, slide, please. Thank you. This is the, uh, the site plan. So as you can see, the, the blue horizontal line is splitting the property in two, and we do have uh, driveways leading to a single parking space at the rear. Um, there is a hydro pole um, at the rear uh, on the Regis side. Um, the separation is 0.72 of a meter um, from that driveway. We did get confirmation and it is in your package uh, from Hydro Ottawa that they require a 0 0.5 meter separation from their pool. So we're, we meet that. We have the waste struck. I'm sorry, did you say something? No. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay, we do have the waste structure in the rear yard, and we're showing the tree uh, roughly in the center of uh, the rear yard, each of the units, and also a new tree in the uh, center of the frontage along De Glise, and also a planter um, roughly in the center of the property along the uh, turf stone pavers between the two uh, buildings. We are compliant in terms of uh, front yard side yard, rear yard setbacks, building height. Uh, we're also compliant in terms of uh, front yard and rear yard soft scaping requirements. And also we're compliant in terms of the area in the rear yard that is to be a dedicated area for uh, tree planting. Um, yeah, what, what is your rear yard depth, just out of curiosity? It is, I believe it is about 6.5 meters. As this is a through lot, it doesn't technically have a rear yard setback. Yeah. Um, so the there was a question, there were comments about um, uh, provided about the tree uh, removal along in the um, along the Dillaglee's uh, frontage. There is a tree um, that would be about a meter away from the balcony and the uh, front wall of the building on the northerly lot, that's 674. Um, that tree would not survive the construction or really any con new construction on that uh, site. It is a tree that is already beginning to exhibit signs of uh, decay. There is another tree that is uh, on the lot line between 676 um, and 680 Dillaglees, which is the property to the south. We have been in contact with that property owner. The owners of my clients have been in contact with them. Uh, the owner of 680 and the owner of 680 has signed a, a boundary tree removal uh, uh, form. So that, that has been um, uh, filed and uh, the forester is aware of that. The forester has indicated that there needs to be five new trees on this uh, property based on the size of the trees that are to be removed. We're showing four. We can have another tree uh, on the city right of way, and it would be on the uh, bottom left of the image in front of you. Uh, so it would be between the driveway for 676 and the property line between 676 and 680, which is the property um, to the south. Uh, we're showing two new trees in the uh, the front yard of of the of the units, um, and there was a. a in our comments about driveways uh, coming on to Regis. Um, and uh, the neighbor on uh, Regis has indicated that they didn't want uh, access onto Regis. We feel that this, uh, if we were to provide a, uh, a central uh, driveway um, off Regis and then parking in the rear, it would, it would be more, uh, it, would, it would take up more uh, room and it would also have more hard surfacing and this is a, a more, we think, a more efficient um, use or uh, ability to have one parking space per unit. 
as the committee is aware, there is uh, there um, parking. We don't have to provide parking, but we are wanting to provide one parking space uh, per unit. And uh, that would be obviously uh, that information would be provided to all the tenants that there is only one parking space. So they, if, if that parking space was taken up already, then they would not get a parking space and they would uh, probably, they would not uh, be renting here if they had a parking space, a park, if they had a car. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Thank you. The image on the left is the uh, the view of the property from De Lee, so you can see the, the house and the garage that's there now and the driveway. There is no sidewalk along De Lee's in this area. The uh, tree on the left, um, this fall, the picture was taken last fall, the picture on the left is the, uh, the boundary tree in question. Um, and then the image on the right hand side is the view from uh, Regis with the garage on the right, which is shown on the left on the other image and the rear of the house. Um, there is, as you can see on the image, uh, on the right-hand side, on the far left-hand side of that image, there is a tree that is a city tree, um, and it is in front of 427 Regis, and our construction would not impact that tree. Our driveway for the uh, northerly unit uh, would be 72 centimeters, so that is about, um, two and a half feet uh, to the right or to the south of that hydro pool. Uh, okay. Next slide, please. This is the, uh, the front and rear images of the, uh, of the triplex uh, units. Uh, they all have uh, front facing balconies. They are three bedroom units. And uh, the staircase is uh, towards the center of the overall property. And there is an access uh, at the rear uh, that would lead to the parking space. There's no balconies at the rear. Correct. There's no no Im no impact regarding overlooking and uh, privacy and noise that, to our neighbors in the rear of the building. That is correct. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a, a straight elevation drawing of the front and the rear. The building height is ten and a half meters. And um, the zoning in the area allows an 11 meter uh, height for a uh, triplex uh, unit. Okay. Next slides, please. These are the side views. You can see the, uh, the balcony. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's the side view between the two uh, buildings. And then the next slide, please. This is from the tree information report showing the uh, the tree in blue, which is the boundary tree, which is to be removed. I think it's about a 37 centimeter pole. And then the uh, tree on the right is a 70 or 71 centimeter diameter Norway maple. Um, that is uh, quite close to, it's I think within a meter of the uh, proposed foundations. And uh, the, that would not uh, survive uh, construction. And that, that has been reviewed. Um, by the um, uh, the forester, and I believe there's conditions in the uh, uh, planner's report on this. Next slide, please. This is the typical, uh, it's the ground floor plan, but it's the typical floor plan. There, there are three bedrooms, there's the stairs, um, and then there's a, a walk-in closet and a, a washroom. And then the room at the front, uh, at the bottom half, would be a, a kitchen and a, a living room, uh, family room. And then the next slide, please. Basement plan, there's storage units, a mechanical room, and then a recreational room that can be used uh, by the tenants. And that would be facing the uh, front of, uh, that would be facing De Glees. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the last slide. So the image on the left shows the build the property in blue. It shows um, sixplex units um, to the north on the same side of the street. There's three of those. Um, they are roughly the same size property, and they are one building of uh, six units. Um, they were probably built in the 50s or 60s, 
Um, to the north of that at 642 is an existing triplex. And then the image on the right is showing uh, properties to the south, immediately to the south at 680 um, is a uh, triplex. And then there are some further triplexes at uh, 703, 709, and I think seven, can't see the number, it, it would be the next one to the south. There's three triplexes in a row. And then they're on uh, uh, Morgan Street, uh, opposite to one another, there are two uh, sixplex uh, units. So the, the area on the west side of Rue de l'Eglise is all in an R4 zone. I believe the properties um, um, uh, to the east, uh, those are townhouses, and I believe those are in R3 zone. But uh, everything on the west side of de l'Eglise and to the west on Regis um, and La Pointe is in an R4 zone, which permits uh, single semis, triplexes, and low rise apartments. So the, the variances that we're asking for, it's almost the identical variance on each. It's related to uh, lot area. The lot area requirement is 300 square meters. Uh, our, based on the, the shape and size of the lots, we uh, there are about 293 each. I think one was 293.4, one of them was 293.2. It's a surveying uh, uh, calculation. And um, so that's about a 2.4% reduction. And then uh, lot width, the requirement is 10 meters and we have 9.6. Uh, so that's a 4% reduction. So the, the variances that are being requested are, are quite minor in nature. It is a permitted use in the zone, uh, meets the city's uh, intensification uh, goals and guidelines. It's, it's supported in the official plan. Um, it's an appropriate uh, development and use of the land. And uh, we have, uh, we have uh, staff support and as well, uh, we have, um, I distributed the drawings to the community association, Overbrook Community Association. They responded to me saying they were happy that these are three unit, uh, uh, three, three bedroom units, and uh, that it's good that uh, small families can, can move into the neighborhood um, and that they, they didn't have any uh, concerns. We did distribute a summary of the uh, application and the drawings uh, in the immediate neighbors um, with uh, my contact information and one of the owner's contact uh, information and we did not hear from anybody. Okay. Right. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. You're aware of the, uh, of the conditions that the city has, uh, has, uh, has imposed, <clears throat> cash and loop, tree yep. planning plan, development agreement, or a letter of undertaking to prepare and implement the tree planning plan and security is of $400 per tree for a period of one year. Yes. Uh, existing dwelling to be removed, services capped. Um, we've removed <clears throat> uh, condition five because it's yep. redundant. Grading and drainage plan and a development agreement for uh, an as asphalt overlay. Yes, I am. Okay. Mr. Mr. Wilder, you had any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um... Can you hear me? Um, can you hear me? Or, okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Robinson, a few things. First of all, the concerns about on-street parking here in terms of two, uh, six apartments, two parking spaces, four cars. I suspect in this location, at least one or more, and perhaps all four of the units are going to have vehicles. Um, you see that as a concern? Obviously, that's been raised by the neighbors. Yes, um, the, the, it's three units per building, so six units in total, and we're able to provide um, one, one parking space per unit on the property. And there is, um, uh, so that would be a total of two on the property. The, the bylaw does not require any parking um, for up to 12 units in this area. Um, it's, and, and this is the way that, um, you know, the, the city's policies are going in, in terms of uh, reducing the amount of parking that is being provided uh, through intensification. Um, the comment that the neighbor had with regards to on the uh, individual living on Regis Avenue at 427 Regis, yes. uh, with regards to um, the concern about snow removal, 
uh, um, which may be pushed onto the city drain, uh, which is, I'm familiar with another case similar to that um, next to her tree. Um, uh, this is this an, uh, something that, well, how is the removal going to be dealt with here? Well, the, the, the owners are going to have to coordinate, they're going to have to have a contractor to remove um, the, the snow off the driveway. And that can be, that can be uh, directed away from uh, the property at 427. Um, they'll have to, you know, they'll probably have to do it before and after a snowstorm because the city is going to plow that area as well. The, um, the one point uh, I noticed there was a comment. I, you said the uh, setback from the hydro pole, you said it was going to be 0.5 or 1.5? Yeah. They, we, we reached out to Hydro Ottawa before we started this project and got confirmation that they require a 0 0.5 meter setback for a driveway from a hydro pole. We are providing in excess of that of 0 0.72. On Friday afternoon, when I got the package of comments, one of them was from the right of way group and they had a series of comments to all the applications and they indicate 1.5, which caught me by surprise. Um, the person who made those comments, um, it, it appears is or was a summer student. And I reached out and didn't get an answer on Friday afternoon. I reached out again Tuesday after the long weekend. And that person has forwarded the comments on to someone else who contacted me this morning saying that they're going to look into it. But my understanding is Hydro Ottawa has a... 0 0.5 meter separation requirement and we're in excess of that on the uh, northerly um, of the two driveways. The, obviously the, the hydro pole is on the city property. If there is, we could potentially do something in terms of the width of the driveway from the travel portion of the road to the property line where the hydro pole is and increase that from its provide, or designed 0 0.72 meters, we could probably bring it up to about a meter, but I don't think we can bring it to 1.5 meters. Hmm. Who's uh, <clears throat> the, uh, can the planner uh, comment on this? Is the, com is the planner available? Which planners? Oh, uh, Ms. Linker, uh, can you comment? You've seen the comment from, uh, um, from the ROR, uh, ROW uh, group uh, with regarding to the 1.5 meters. Um, obviously, you're supporting this application. You have no issues then with the, uh, the difference between uh, what the comment is and what Mr. Robinson's client is proposing. Um, thank you for the question through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would have to follow up with the contact or contact from White Away to see um, the implications of the 1.5 meter requirement. Um, I don't believe I have an answer at this moment. If I could just interject that the comments that were provided to the committee um, and are in your, I would assume are in your comment package for this file. Yep. There's a two page uh, uh, comments from Hydro Ottawa. And on the second page, it clearly says 0 0.5 meters. All right, well, I mean, something we'll have to consider, I suppose. Um, thank you, Mr. Robinson. One last point, um, are, do we have any guarantees? I know you can't provide any guarantees, but you know, you're providing substantial number of windows. Typically, you know, I've been to many three-story apartment buildings which just have storage and basement level, the lower level, and they just have adequate lighting inside. You're providing a substantial number of windows. I realize there is a rec room, but that rec room seems to have just one window. What certainty, looking at the layout, what certainty is do we have, I guess, at this point that once we approve this, in a year or two's time, your client doesn't come back, ask for variances, saying the storage space isn't being used, the tenants really don't need that recreation space, which is unusual in this case, um, and that we want to create a fourth unit. I mean, uh -huh. you know, it's very plausible the way you're designing this, um, that with, you know, with the windows and, the, you know, I mean, it's such that it's quite feasible to convert that space considering its elevation um, and considering the windows you're putting in to convert that. Because 
I've heard this story before where, well, a year or two, three down the road saying, well, it's unfortunate, but um, uh, well, uh, the, we had hoped that they would use the rec space, but they're not. And, you know, the storage space is going unused. And I've heard that story before. Um, we'd like to convert that space to a fourth unit. It's a tight rental market. And um, we're asking for your approval. Um, what do you have to say to that? Any, well, it's uh, not. It's not the owner's intention at this point in time to convert that to a, uh, a fourth unit. Um, there would be a greater scope of variance is be, if the zoning is the same, if that was to happen. And uh, if the zoning was to be the same right now, the on a triplex, there's a different lot width and lot area requirement. It's just between two and a half and four percent on lot area and lot width. But on uh, a low rise apartment, which kicks in at four units or more, the requirement is 12, me 12 meters and 360 square meters. So it'd be another variance application and it's not the intent at this time. And it's not my client's intent to do that. Well, I know I appreciate it will require another variance application naturally, but you know, I mean, with three done, the building built and suppose that space that's going, may be going unused. And the fact that it's been designed at the outset at this moment to accommodate the fourth unit. All right, thank you for that answer. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Wilder, Mr. Mr. Wildman. So um, I'd like to come back to the hydro and the right of way uh, discussion. Um, hydro owns the utility and they don't want a driveway within 0.5 meters of the utility right-of-way management operates the entire right-of-way and all utilities in it, all snow storage in it, all trees in it. And they're saying they don't want a driveway near that utility. Those are two different things. One is saying, keep my utility away from the driveway. The other one's saying, take the driveway and move it away from the utility. So I, I think it would be in the applicant's best interest to resolve this. Uh, because there may be a private approach issue and you may not get a permit for it. I think uh, a, a two-week deferral to go back to, high, uh, to um, uh, the right-of-way unit and say, look, are you going to permit this uh, at uh, less than 1.5 meters? I think that would resolve everything. And uh, I think it would be the, the most prudent way to go. I, I think many, many times this committee has sent uh, applicants back to talk to utilities and agencies to resolve issues where there appears to be some confusion or conflict. And the fact that Hydro Ottawa has said 0.5 meters is not convincing enough to me when another um, a, uh, agency that operates the entire right of way is saying 1.5. I'm not saying you won't get it resolved with them. I'm just saying, I think it leaves some question about what right of way management wants. And uh, so I'm gonna suggest that uh, a brief uh, adjournment to go back and chat with them and see if you can work this out. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wildman. Mr. Robinson? Uh, well, obviously, we'd prefer to have it dealt with uh, today. I understand Mr. Wildman's uh, comments, and uh, um, I, I've never run into um, this discrepancy uh, before, so it sort of caught me by surprise on Friday afternoon, and I've been trying to um, trying to get resolution on it. Um, we, if it's the will of the committee, we will uh, stand it down for uh, two weeks. And- uh, We don't we don't like surprises any more than you do. No. <laughs> okay. So well, it was I, a Friday I, afternoon I surprise before a long weekend. So I, um, Mr. Mr. Milden with his, with his background is well, well aware of what can go wrong and right, obviously. Uh, perhaps a two-week adjournment, and we have space on the on the agenda on the twenty-first of September, Mr. Belmar. Yes, we do, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we adjourn this until the twenty-first of September, so that you can resolve those issues, Mr. Robinson. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, could I just interject? Yeah, certainly. Ms. Perhaps Washington. if we could have some more Please. evidence, uh, just written evidence on the lot pattern and dimensions. In okay. the neighborhood, given the nature of the variances that we're being asked for, I don't believe I heard evidence on the sizes of similar size lots with the use that are on that are on there existing on them. So, if we could just have that in written form, uh, 
before the uh, September 21st, that would be uh, great. Thanks. Okay, by you, Mr. Robinson? Yes. Okay. All right. So we will adjourn this until the September the 21st and we can get the, uh, the, the issues resolved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, on the next item that's before us today, the item number 12 on the agenda. And this is a, <clears throat> excuse me, 121 Evelyn Avenue, Old Ottawa East, minor variance application to permit reduced corner and interior side yard setbacks, an increase in garage projection and an increase in driveway width for the renovations of the existing single family dwelling. Uh, this was this application was adjourned on April the 6th, 2022, because there was a missing variance. That, that has been uh, that has been dealt with, that has been resolved, and this is this application is now back before us. And the uh, agent for the applicant is Mr. Hamel. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, committee members. My name is Jacques Hamel. Um, my address is 170 Main Street. Do I need to swear? Yes, you do. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the notice provided to you as part of the application process and by the committee was posted at the property to which the application applies for the prescribed number of days before the hearing and clearly visible and legible during the entirety of that time? Yes, I do so swear. Okay. Uh, you're aware, Mr. Hamel, that uh, staff have concerns with this application, and that uh, there are a there are a number of neighbors who are uh, in opposition to this uh, to this application as well. And we have uh, one, two, three. We have four, well, three three neighbors and the Old Ottawa East Community Association on the speakers list today because of their concerns with your application. So. Um, I think before we begin, if the uh, planning department could articulate its concerns regarding this application, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We do have concerns largely arising from the introduction of the driveways that are not permitted on the property. Um, this one in particular has three widths of single driveways. Okay. And this is not common in the neighborhood, I would assume. It is not. Anything else, Mr. Hamilton? Sorry, that, that extends to the remainder of the variances that are seeking to permit the, the driveway. It's uh, widening the building envelope towards the intersection uh, to permit the, the parking uses. Okay. And that's all for myself. All right, thank you, Mr. Hamilton. All right, Mr. Hamel, if you'd like to make a presentation, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Tardioli in my office here will do the presentation. Also with us um, are the owners um, behind me. They can introduce themselves, I guess. Yeah, and uh, we're at the five minute clock is running, Mr. Hamel. So we uh, okay. you know, the four tests are what's important here. Where's the presentation? Can I Can we have the first slide, please? Can we have the first slide, please? We can make it. The brand is waiting. Apologies, we're just running into some technical difficulties. We'll have it up shortly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind uh, me saying, it, it strikes me as um, interesting that right away management has very similar comments on the 1.5 meter setback from hydro poles on this application as well.
And while we're waiting for the presentation, Mr. Wildman, are you aware of the rationale behind that 1.5 meter setback? Or is it just an arbitrary number? I don't think it's arbitrary, uh, Mr. Chair. I think what it does is it, it, it does factor in a lot of what goes on in the average utility corridor. Yep. Uh, and uh, each each location, of course, is different. The utilities placement is different and, and how snow storage occurs is different. Um, yep. But I, I believe it was you know well considered. Uh, whether there's flexibility or not, I, I would say that's up to the regulatory authority who, who, who administered the bylaw. Okay. There we go. All right. Again. Okay. Uh, so the purpose of this minor app minor variance application is to vary the driveway width portion of the interior side yard and a small triangular portion of the corner side yard setback in order to construct a proposed attached garage and driveway. Next slide, please. Uh, we will be taking you through these items, subject property, street width context, neighbors contacted proposal, parking and driveway density within subject block, corner lot parking disadvantages, existing corner lot driveway width context, history and future of 121 Evelyn, and the conclusion. Next slide, please. Uh, 121 Evelyn, Evelyn is located at the corner of Evelyn Avenue and Simcoe Street in Old Ottawa East. The building is an existing two-story house, which is located 1.2 meters from the interior side yard and 0.34 meters from the uh, rear yard. There is an existing single lane driveway partially in the rear yard and an existing shed in the front yard, which will be removed. And in the green is the existing hedges along the front and corner side yards. Note that the location of the existing house, which has been uh, recently renovated, is very close to the interior side yard and abuts the city laneway in the rear. Please also note the skewed geometry of the lot from 12.39 meters wide, narrowing to 8.5 meters wide. The required setbacks are shown, shown in orange and the existing house enjoys a non-complying right. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the street with context. Evelyn goes, from Main Street in the bottom left west corner of the map to Brunswick Street, which is not shown on the map. Part of Evelyn is a one-way street from Rosemere uh, Street to Main Street, which is shown in green and black. The width of the one-way section is 6.3 meters, uh, and it continues that width all the way to Simcoe Street uh, from, from Rosemere. To Brunswick uh, Street is no longer a one-way. The, the street is also lined with no parking signs on the right on the north side of the street shown as uh, red dots, permitting parking only on the south side. The narrow street and lack of street parking make it difficult and dangerous to park. Parking on site at the subject property will permit safer vehicular access for a young family and will not permit uh, and will sorry and will permit more street parking for neighborhood use. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. uh, the owners contacted uh, 43 neighbors and 40 of them were in support. Uh, we also spoke with uh, Councillor Menard's office uh, and he has no objections. Uh, we also at the time spoke with Ottawa East Association, uh, which had no objection at the time, but now they do. Uh, next slide, please. The proposal is to add a two-story front addition shown in yellow to the existing house shown in gray and renovate the existing rear yard 
entry and storage area all comply with the zoning bylaw. <clears throat> the proposed one story double car addition uh, meets the front yard setback along Simcoe, but a small triangular portion encroaches into the corner side yard and slightly into the interior side yard. The proposal seeks to clear the corner site triangle of existing obstructions. The existing shed will also be removed. Note that the new driveway is only 15 feet at its longest and cannot be used to park on. The only visible parking space is the existing driveway, which will be used for access to garbage and a secondary dwelling unit. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the parking and driveway density within the subject block. As you can see here, uh, many of the uh, lots in the block have uh, capability to have more than uh, five or five or uh, can have a maximum of five parking spaces. Uh, and you can see that the corner lots are uh, at a can only fit a minimum of two. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as you can see here, based uh, the SCA uh, skews uh, corner lots to, or is skewed against corner lots. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. No problem. This, lot, this diagram um, shows the disadvantages of being on a corner property when we are looking at an average uh, number or majority number of properties that are accounted for the SCA, in particular driveway widths. All corner properties, as we can see, will not benefit from a single wide driveway that would lead to parking along the interior side yards of any interior uh, lot. All the corner properties, because of the increased corner side yard setbacks, would force the building to the interior side yard, leaving no room or not enough room to have parking um, in tandem, for example, uh, uh, through, through a driveway that would go along the interior yard. All the corner properties would um, um, show that the access to the property would be on the long length on the corner corner um, lots and would only ever be able to provide a maximum of two parking. That um, this is absolutely the case in the entire block that we we've, we've uh, that we've uh, analyzed. So it's clear that the SCA that determines the width of the number of driveway width that you are. Uh, permitted is based on the majority of lots which happen to be interior lots on any type of SCA analysis. So our contention here is that we are being um, disadvantaged from being able to provide parking that is permitted as of right on interior lots of up to five parking spaces and they're restricted to just one or two um, um, because of the nature of the geometry of how the, the built envelope needs to be placed on the lot. Next slide. We've looked at the uh, corners uh, along Evelyn <coughs> that, are, uh, that um, have properties that are very commensurate with the subject property. We've looked at 11 corner lots Four of them have single wide driveways, seven have double wide driveways or more. And it turns out through our calculations that on average, every corner lot has a 2.2 driveway width available to it. Furthermore, we looked at the amount of parking that was avail that is available on those lots um, for, and that ends up to be 43 total parking spaces for the corner lots, and that's about four parking spaces per corner. And I'll just remind you from the previous uh, slide or two slides that whereas all the interior lots have actually the potential of up to five parking spaces. The subject property actually only has one presently, one parking space, because the existing house 
moves is built into the rear yard and with one single wide driveway uh, coming off of Evelyn, there is only room for one parking space on the property. Next slide, please. These slides actually um, are an analysis of the figures that we've just gone through. So I'll, for example, let's say take, um, um, uh, let's say a number, the corner lot number five, there's a total here of four driveway widths on that property on Evelyn. That's, um, I'm not sure of the, anyways, it's number five and you can refer back to the reference map. This single corner uh, property with the image of that building right to the left of the plan there actually has eight parking spaces available and three garages albeit the form is different, but the property is a corner property. Next slide, please. These complete the 11 lots that we've uh, analyzed. If we just take another one randomly, for example, number seven, this is another corner property. It has a total of seven parking spaces across four driveway widths, and we can see two of those driveway, uh, double uh, uh, wide driveway widths uh, lead to par uh, attached garages and space for parking in front of them. And at the bottom of the plan there, we see uh, three more parking spaces on a double, wide, uh, um, a double wide driveway, one of which is in a garage. So it's very clear that the corner lot provisions or the corner lot as built environment uh, within 11 corner properties um, show an average of, of I think about 2.2 uh, uh, parking spaces per property. Next slide, please. Um, the existing building, when purchased, I think we were looking at a, a building that was in the on the left-hand side of the screen there. You can see the uh, driveway um, that led to a parking. Over time, um, the clients purchased it, renovated it, and you can see in the upper right, uh, the renovated building as it exists presently, and then below it, the proposal. The uh, clients, our clients, the owners uh, purchased the property, I think about eight or 10 years ago at that time. I beg your pardon? Sorry, three years ago at that time. Uh, since then have started a young family and have invested quite a bit of their time to renovate the existing house um, because they plan to stay here and raise their family. Uh, that was the main purpose for many of the, for, for the addition and the work that we've done, uh, which includes uh, a two-story addition on the front of the building, the renovated um, um, access to uh, the secondary dwelling unit on the left there, as well as garbage storage and the deck above. And then to the right uh, is the double car garage that they both require as young professionals, professionals and to safely um, uh, um, embark with their, their children and exit uh, their children on site. Next slide, please. So I'll just remind you of the minor variances to permit a portion of the attached garage addition to a corner side um, addition, a corner side yard setback of 1.67. Um, instead, uh, of aligning with the abutting corner side yard setback of, of 2.45 meters. If we can go back to the site plan, I'll just point this out to you again, please. I think it's on page two or three. Is this the right slide? No. Um, maybe maybe Next four. Yeah. Sorry. Four, please. Five. <laughs> thank you. I'm not sure if we can zoom in there. Oh, thank you. You read my mind. Um, the corner, uh, because of the geometry of the site, which is skewed, the original building was built parallel to the interior side yard to the north there. 
The addition is also parallel to the house. It only makes sense. The depth of the addition for the garage is just barely what we need to be able to uh, park two cars uh, side by side. Um, mind you, the front yard setback is met here. It meets the front yard setback but the interior side yard uh, requires a variance of 0.6 meters um, rather than 1.2. And that area is hatched uh, in gold at the top of the garage. Again, the garage inside is 18 feet with the wall thicknesses. We had to locate it there. This uh, side yard setback actually is quite commensurate with the interior side yard setbacks that are permitted for any interior lot. The total side yard setback for an I3P zone interior lot is 1.8 meters. And one of those side yards can be 0.6 meters. And this is what we're providing. I'll remind you of the map of the block. Every property that is abutting a driveway has a 0.6 meter side yard setback along that abutting driveway or less in the entire block. The front facing Evelyn, I'll call that the front, uh, is a triangle that goes from zero on the right and left hand side of the garage addition. It actually meets the front yard setback, but due to the nature of that skew in the property, on the right hand side or the east side, there is a variance there because the garage is parallel to the house and not parallel to the corner side yard. Uh, we require a setback, uh, a further uh, reduction in the front yard setback of um, about uh, 1.7 meters, right? Yeah, Mr. Hamel, before you continue, could I ask you a question? I'm looking at the schematic. What's the distance between the front wall of the proposed garage and the sidewalk? Um, <clears throat> on the, on the right-hand side, uh, we have about 15, no, 12 feet. And on the left side, we have about 14 point, 15 feet. So on the short side, uh, Mr. Chair, from the back of the sidewalk, uh, we have about 12 feet, which is insufficient to park there. Mm -hmm. On the deeper side, on the left-hand side, it's only 15 feet. And most cars are about 15 feet or 16 feet. An average car is 16 feet. There is never going to be an opportunity to uh, park uh, a standard size car in on the driveway leading to the garage. And that's a point that I think we, we, we we're, we're also like wanting to highlight for you. So that that driveway pad. Uh, that driveway uh, expanse of, of uh, that expanse of driveway will never will always be clear of obstructions from vehicles unless I guess you have a motorcycle or or a mini or something. Is is that answer your question, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hamel. So really, that corner that intrusion into the corner side yard is due entirely to the skewed nature of the property line that is the corner side property line. The green line, since we're here, is again, based on that skewed corner, the area that the front of the garage ought to be set back to be behind the entrance. Our entire uh, argument here, Mr. Chair, is that the existing house is parallel to the rear lot line the viewing of that garage that is also parallel to the rear lot line and the rest of the house will be perceived to be behind the frontmost portion of the building. In fact, it is about five feet, 1.5 meters further back from the front leading edge of the second story addition that is being proposed and that is at the front yard set or the corner side yard set back. So the intent of the uh, setting the, the garage back past or further from the corner side yard than the existing uh, front of the building has in fact been met when we, as we perceive this building to be uh, uh, normal to itself rather than normal to the property line, which is an imaginary line that you'll never see on site. 
Next, um, if we could go to the last page again. So I have talked about the uh, 0.6 meter rear yard setback and keeping in mind, of course, it's only for the garage. The rest of the house is, uh, is at 1.2 meters and it's also abutting a laneway, uh, the, the um, uh, neighbor's driveway. And finally, on that point, uh, there's an existing shed that is even closer to the interior side yard setback, which uh, if this, will be removed. So we'll actually be in, um, um, ameliorating that, that interior side yard setback uh, uh, from what exists presently. Um, and then finally, the most contentious one, and I would ask the committee to uh, please deliberate this, this, uh, this variance, perhaps separately from the others, um, to permit a total driveway width of 8.19 meters, which represents basically three single wide uh, driveways, whereas only one single wide driveway is permitted. That is the extent of these variances. You can see that uh, most of them are quite minor, but I will go through the four tests for you. Uh, the general intent and purpose of the official plan does permit a single family home. It might also be noted that in the um, development of this area, there are many single family homes that are being uh, replaced with uh, um, more intense intensification. This is a, a home for a, a, a young family who have already dedicated quite a bit of time and resources and energy and would love to stay in the, in the neighborhood, but uh, require garage and those additions to do so, only the garage being uh, subject to variances. Does the proposal maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw? Well, of course, the R3P zone does permit single family homes. Um, it does look at uh, restricting the number of driveway widths, which we've shown, uh, but it also talks about meeting the general character of neighborhoods. We feel, given the evidence that this uh, proposal uh, does, in fact, we don't even meet the, the, the average, if you will, um, development of some corner property. Um, so we feel that this also meets the general intent of, uh, and purpose of the zoning bylaw. The front, the corner side yard variance is very minor, going from zero on the right hand side, on the left hand side of the garage to a little bit more, one point some odd meters. I can't remember offhand here, uh, one point six seven, I guess, um, because of the nature of the geometry of the property, which will never probably ever be perceived on streetscape. Is the proposal uh, minor? Um, I think we've shown that from zero to a little bit more than a meter is very minor, it would never be really apprehended to be uh, an encroachment. Um, the impact of the one story double car garage against a two story existing building uh, slowly increases the mass of that building. We feel has absolutely no negative impact on the massiveness of that, uh, of that uh, building and um, uh, so we feel that that is minor as well. Um, and then as far as the rear yard uh, or the interior side yard, we also think that it's minor since it's actually permitted in any other interior lot. The double or the three single wide driveways, we've shown that in terms of context, it's a very minor um, um, uh, request given that many of the other corner properties and the resultant um, number of parking spaces is equal to or in fact less than the average of the surrounding entire block. Is a proposal desirable for the appropriate development or use of the land? It absolutely is. This is a single family home that we hope uh, to be able to continue. It hopes to be able to continue its use as a single family home uh, with the required addition of the uh, double car garage as I mentioned, required for each of the owners. They're both professionals. They both require cars for their work. And more importantly, um, I would contend that uh, the safe uh, um, access and exiting of these vehicles uh, for their young children 
will be safest on site rather than crossing a narrow one-way street or not quite one way yet. I guess it starts one way just to the uh, west of it um, and having to cross the street two, three times a day with their, ch with their children. Uh, it makes no sense to do that when there is an available, easy available way to accommodate that on this property. We have uh, noted that um, the community association originally, uh, when we met with them, uh, the owners had one letter of objection. There were a few others that had not committed themselves. And we note that there are, what, 40, 40 some odd people uh, who have been con uh, contacted who have no objections to this application. Um, and uh, again, I'll just reiterate that the counselor's office had no, no objection to this application either. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hamel. Uh, you, we've heard from the planning department regarding their concerns with the application. Um, I'm looking at the our comment sheet from the right of way people, and they're basically saying that their pri any private approach must have a 1.5 meter setback from a hydro pole. Is that condition going to be met? There is no uh, hydro pole along that uh, property line, so yes, it will be met. Okay, so that's not an issue. Not an issue. Okay, all right. Ms. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just had a question of um, why you want to retain the existing driveway. And, and the other, secondly to that, is there a, a secondary dwelling unit going in? Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, thank you, Ms. McLean. There is an existing driveway there. We, the owners and uh, there has been a permit issued for a secondary dwelling unit in the basement of the existing home. Its access is uh, on the west side of the house underneath the, the, the deck there. Uh, so that, that uh, walkway pathway driveway will be used uh, by the tenants. And it, there is also storage for garbage right next to it. Um, and uh, that will also use that pathway uh, to roll and to roll out, and, uh, roll back uh, the, the garbage containers. So will there be a parking space for the secondary dwelling unit in that existing driveway? Right now, the, uh, thank you for that question. We're right now uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, the owners I understand are actually going to reappropriate the secondary dwelling unit uh, for their own use uh, during the, the growth of their family. But if they it were to stay a secondary dwelling unit, my understanding is that it would not be available for the tenants as a parking space. Uh, so my last question is, is there any thought to reducing this, that existing driveway down to a walkway pathway? Um, if you can just give me one second here. Um, just uh, the owners have informed me that um, they are looking forward to having their parents uh, um, come and visit or be with them for a while and would appreciate that to remain as a parking space for them. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the members of the committee regarding this application? We have a number of uh, speakers from the neighborhood who uh, wish to weigh in on this, uh, on this application. And I'll start with the old Ottawa East Community Association. Is Mr. Dance there? Thank you. Thank you, Chair, uh, Chair Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. Um, your address, for, the, your for the record, oh, Mr. Dance, me. your address first. Absolutely. John Dance, 68 McNaughton Avenue, Ottawa. I'm uh, chair of the old Ottawa East uh, Planning Committee. Um, back February 1st, the uh, applicants met with the uh, planning committee and uh, they were very forthcoming. Um, we appreciate their initiative that they took. Um, indeed, one of the things that came out of that meeting, we said we wouldn't oppose 
And we also, uh, they also said that they would plant some significant uh, larger trees up at the east. And this was seen as a positive thing. Subsequent to that meeting, uh, several things happened. One, we learned that there was more opposition than, than, um, than had been expressed at our meeting with the applicants. Secondly, we saw the city's uh, comments on the application. Um, so um, <laughs> we sort of, the facts changed from our standpoint and thus we have changed our position from not opposing to now opposing. Um, the, the critical thing is that as per the city's analysis, as, as said earlier, um, you know, what's being proposed is to have about eight meters of uh, driveway access versus the three that's allowed. And to us, this is far beyond what, what the, well, it's far beyond what is, is, is not minor at all. And I appreciate it's a corner lot. Um, and there may be differences in other corn lots, but <laughs> if anybody was coming forward to seek uh, eight meters elsewhere, that would also be opposed. I don't, frankly don't know how the, how the ones that were cited in the analysis were approved in the past, but they wouldn't be. And I would stress that in terms of what the official plan is and how the lengthy process we went through for the new official plan, we had the chief planner uh, come and talk with us and he assured us that with the and with the um, insistence on a single three meter driveway, the streetscape character of our community in, in such a zone as uh, the applicants are would be maintained. But instead we're talking about a separate driveway and then a, a double driveway. And to us, it just seems far from minor and it should not be approved. So those are the key points. Again, I, I do commend the applicants for coming forward and bringing this to us. It's just that subsequent that we read the city's council comments and <laughs> we didn't ha have them before. And secondly, we've talked to, to the neighbors and we hadn't had that opportunity to do that. So I do appreciate this opportunity, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So uh, as far as the variances are concerned, Mr. Danson, I'm sure you're aware of them. Uh, the Community Association has no objections to variance A, B, and C. Right. I mean, A, B, and C. But you, but you are, are in opposition to variance D, which was through the driveway width. It, it's the driveway one that's frankly driving all the other ones. So, so yes, it's a driveway one. That's okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dance. Any questions, comments for the uh, Auto, Old Auto East Community Association? Okay. We also have the Mr. Peters and Miss Evans. Are they there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Mr. Peters, your address for the record, please. Yes, sure. My name is Tim Peters. I live at 20 Simcoe Street, Ottawa, Ontario, K1S1A2. Um, we are the assessed property owners sharing the interior side yard with 120 Evelyn Street. Okay. Please proceed. Okay. Um, we also are professionals. We have three young children. We have a single wide driveway. I just want to make that noted. Um, We've already provided our written statements outlining our overall concerns. In those statements, we have also included several proposed um, solutions. Today, we'd like to verbally state our opposition to some of the variances being proposed. But again, we're, off, we're insistent that we're offering compromises and proposed solutions. Before I start my presentation, although it seems unusual to say, um, but I felt it was important to the committee to know that we have not spoken with the homeowners since October of 2021 when we met with them to discuss our concerns regarding a new exterior door, which they installed again on a previous application in the interior side yard in the northwest corner of the property. This door was removed at some point in March 2022, following the city's order to comply. And that was included, a copy of that was included in our written statements for more details. While the next point is not part of the community's decision, we also wanted to make it clear and reiterate a point that we raised in the written statements. We do not support a new hedge along the shared property line of the interior side yard. Here are our specific comments today. And to that, uh, and and I'm, I'm assuming your comments are to the four, to the variances being requested. Absolutely, yep. yep. Thank you. 
Um, we oppose the request to permit a reduced setback for the interior side yard, and we also oppose the request to permit a total driveway width of 8.19 meters. Uh, concerning the rear yard, the interior side yard variance is specific to the rear yard of the rear of the proposed garage. The revised plans are proposing that the rear of the garage would project closer to the lot line than what is permitted. I know the representative for the homeowners noted that they're an RP3 dwelling. Um, RP3 is really established for three unit dwellings. The homeowners are wishing to retain the use of a single family home with a, a basement apartment. And as a, as, a, as a representative noted, they are proposing not to use the basement and retain it for their own purposes. So using RP3 as a reason why they would go to the 0.6 uh, doesn't meet the standards uh, here. Um, we also, Note that uh, you can see more details in our written comments. Um, we're offering a solution that if the garage space is needed as suggested to fit the two cars, um, then we propose the homeowners eliminate the rear portion of the garage in the interior side yard and keep it aligned with the existing structure or instead they could increase the front side of the garage and seek necessary variance specific to the corner side yard setback as well as a variance seeking approval for the garage addition to project closer to the lot line in the same corner side yard or possibly the front yard as it butts Simcoe Street. This is especially since the city staff, the city planner are seemingly giving an exemption to the formula being used for the corner site triangle. If you refer back to the revised site plan, that formula is now based on three meters, whereas the bylaw 57, I believe, section 57 notes that the, the formula should be based on six meters. Um, yeah. So anyway, and our second concern is over the safety in terms of the number of driveways being proposed and the corner site triangle. Um, see our written statement for more details about the safety concerns, but also the drainage and corner site triangle concerns as they are specifically possible, there, there will possibly be obstructions resulting from the proposed newly new driveway in the easterly uh, side of the portion. Um, it's represented as 5.59 meters. Our priority is that there be a clear sight line maintained, no visual barriers or overgrowth of vegetation as currently exists in order to eliminate any obstructions in the views of the for pedestrians and motors. We are concerned that a double wide easterly driveway would negatively impact the corner site triangle for Simcoe Evelyn intersection. Our other concern about the easterly portion of the drive, double driveway, it, that the portion of that a portion of it will exit the, into the existing catch basin located at, at street level on Evelyn Street. This point was also raised by the city planner in one of their previous reports. Catch basins, as you know, are an important part of the city's infrastructure. The solution that we're proposing um, to address many of our concerns regarding the driveways, those being safety, those being drainage, those being corner sight lines. As proposed by the city planner, we also suggest that the paved area in the westerly portion of the corner side yard, so what is called the existing driveway, although I don't believe it's a permitted driveway that exists right now in on Evelyn Street, it's, it's there, it's paved, it's existed for many years, but I don't think it's approved. Um, we're proposing that that one, that driveway in the westerly portion be in the corner side yard, be re returned to its intended and proposed use, which is a pathway. And our other proposal in terms of a solution to our, our, our concerns with this is that the, the new double wide driveway in the easterly portion of the corner side yard be revised so that only the top portion of the double wide port driveway at the entrance be retained and that it narrows to a single width at the street level. Um, I, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to, uh, as other uh, reviewers have been given the time, do you, do you mind if I just take a couple of extra Very minutes? Very briefly, please. Yes, for sure, thank you. Say, um, effectively giving the homeowners a driveway to their new garage, but also maintaining a green space in the easterly portion of the proposed double wide driveway, and also addressing our concerns about the corner site triangle, and as noted by your, your members, their concerns over the distance to the existing telephone pole. There is a telephone pole, or hydro pole, I should say, in the easterly portion of the existing property in the front yard that needs to be factored in here. Um, we suggest that uh, you'll see our picture in our written statement for this example, um, we also suggest uh, uh, that uh, reduced curbs, uh, raised curbs be given at the pathway and at the reduced, at, at the, um, at the easterly, both westerly and easterly driveways. This solution fits well with the city planners report where they appear to support the exemption of the corner site triangle formula, adjusting it to three meters instead of the six meters as outlined in section 57 of the bylaws. And then our last point, thank you for the time, is that uh, before concluding my presentation, as noted in a written statement, we feel that the variance, a variance was still admitted 
for the rear yard. And we believe that the halfway rule should apply to the renovations being proposed in the rear yard, which are the entrance to the basement apartment and the new rooftop deck. We suggest that it's missing because the revised plans are proposing to increase the size and, and completely rebuild the carport shed in order to hold the new roof. The halfway rule would uh, allow a non-conforming situation uh, and basically allow and have it, the, have it exist halfway between the existing setback and the required setback. And uh, that's all I have to say for today. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. We also have uh, Ms. Irvin. Is she there? Are you there, Miss Irvin? Oh, here I am. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, Susan Irvin. Yeah, and <laughs> please, please proceed. But uh, I would ask you not to reiterate points already made by your other neighbors. Right. Uh, Susan Irvin, one four three Concourse Street South. Mm -hmm. um, I signed a letter. I sent a letter of comments to you, along yes, with my husband that. Robert Webb. Yep, and the two neighbors at 18 Simcoe Street. Yep. Um, I do not have a lot to add now that Tim has been so thorough. I do support his, uh, we all support his uh, propositions to change and maybe um, alter that double driveway that we can all accept. My main concerns were um, towards the shared lane, the shared alleyway, which is on the west side of the building. And the fact that the shed to support a rooftop deck uh, would not support the weight of a rooftop deck. It has to be removed. Is My understanding is that if a non-conforming building like that is demolished and a new structure put in place, that it would have to comply with the setbacks. Is that true? I believe so then why is that variance not requested in their application? And this is the second time I've asked that, that Mr. if Ham that comes Mr. down, Mr. it has to come down. Mr. Hamilton, perhaps you can answer the, uh, the neighbor's question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the existing shed, or I guess it's a, it's a garage, is attached to the house and is part of the dwelling. The dwelling can come down and be rebuilt. The entirety of the dwelling even if it's not just the shed can come down and be rebuilt um, in the exact same location and retain those legal non-conforming rights. But you can look at the picture of the uh, cover of the application. It is not attached to the house. I mean, it's leaning against the house, but the fact it's built abuts to the property line, it actually, the chain link fence of the property line actually runs through the shed. So it has to come down. And it can't, as far as I'm concerned, it, it should ask for a setback from that shared alley property line. The, the stairs from their proposed deck, if you can look at the renderings, run right into the chain link fence at the property line. So their front step onto that deck is actually in the shared alleyway. Okay, anything else, ma'am? Nope. Oh, I, I am concerned about the visibility on all these driveways going uh, all up, up Evelyn Street. There's a raised hedge, which goes up at least six to eight feet tall, which would encompass, or at least one driveway would come out on one side of it, another, the apparently existing driveway uh, next to the alley, which, you know, they park there, I guess it's an existing driveway. It's the one we want reduced to a pathway. Um, it blocks all uh, visibility. Okay. All right. Thank all right. You. Thank you. And I think our final speaker, Edward and Kate June. And John, is he there? Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Yep. Your address yeah. for the record, please. Uh, 147 Concord Street South, and my house is across the public laneway northwest of 121 Evelyn Street. Okay, so without without reiterating your neighbor's concerns, your comments, please. Absolutely, sir. 
So the current plan presented in front of you by the residents of 121, uh, they're basically the same as was presented in front of you back in April. Uh, in fact, the only difference here is that this time around, they're actually seeking a wider total driveway width of 8.19 meters, right? Yep. So Mr. Chair, the existing structure uh, that was being talked about, um, yes, I understand Mr. Hamilton's point, uh, but uh, I'd like to uh, focus your attention sort of to the uh, staircase that actually has an exit out of that, uh, you know, uh, structure that's right against the lot line. So uh, my kids, uh, their friends, uh, they, you know, go to school uh, using that uh, laneway. I use that laneway on a daily basis. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's going to protrude onto this public laneway. So does this not require a minor variance of its own, the fact that there is an entrance and exit into the property? Okay. Perhaps I could continue and get, uh, get the answers at the end there. So I strongly respect the concerns raised by the city staff that anything more than a single driveway width is really at odds with the dominant characteristics of the neighborhood. Uh, perhaps an acceptable compromise would be what uh, my friend from uh, 20 Simcoe suggested, uh, like an angled eastern driveway. Uh, but Mr. Chair, if you and the panel decide to approve uh, the double garage and the double width driveway on the eastern side, uh, I would ask that the sidewalk and the curb on the western single driveway uh, be raised so that it is used as a walkway. Okay. Okay. So I believe I have some time here. So something needs to be said about representation and consultation that was part of this uh, hearing. So in their submission today, slide 4.3, uh, the agent uh, described uh, several properties in the area with large driveways uh, in an attempt to demonstrate that this is a norm in Old Ottawa East. In fact, that, those are not the norm. Those are the outliers. Uh, if you look at 110 Evelyn, um, it's portrayed as having a triple wide driveway, but this driveway is actually shared between two separate properties. Uh, likewise, 162 Concord uh, does have a double garage and a driveway, but in fact, they're, they're split in half. One belongs to one property on the Concord South, the other, their neighbors in an attached fourplex, correction, uh, and uh, row house. And uh, I'd like to focus our attention, Mr. Chair, to the neighbor's contacted page and the plans. Uh, so at first glance, that's the overhead color coded map. So at first glance, like you see lots of green, it shows the neighborhood that's supportive of the plans. Uh, so I've seen that and I've contacted the six households that are showing green that are closest to me on Concord Street South. Of those six, only half, only three of them were supportive. They said, you know, they should be greens because uh, that's what the legend says, right? Green is supportive. So the residents and owners of 144 Concord and 140 Concord were actually vehemently opposed and they were appalled that they were showing up as green. The residents of 141 uh, were neutral. And when they met up with the neighbor, with the residents of 121, uh, you know, they actually said that they did not want to provide a letter of support. So they should not have shown up as green. So Mr. Chair, how credible is this information presented in front of you and the panels in this neighborhood contacted map? Is there really overwhelming neighborhood support for the plans of 121 Evelyn? I ask you to reflect on that, please. Thank you for your well, time. Uh, frankly, frankly, sir, when we, uh, when we look at the evidence, um, input from neighbors like that and, and support is taken certainly taken into account, but it is not our primary concern. So understood, sir. I just wanted to bring this up to the yeah. attention, to your attention and the attention of yeah. the panel members. Because there is, there is no requirement from us to have public consultation on these matters, as you know, <clears throat> and it's, uh, and applicants reach out. Um, we assume that they have good intentions. Anyway, thank you very much for your input. All right, Mr. Hamel, you've heard uh, from from the association and from three nearby residents who have serious concerns with your application. Would you like to respond? Yes, thank you. Um, maybe I can just go back to Mr. Peters' uh, comments here. Just mostly, I understand their concerns. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, our position is that these uh, variances are in fact minor and desirable for the continued use of the property. Uh, as a single family home, but I'll just make a few comments. I did verify in the R3P zone, uh, the comment that was raised by Mr. Peters that a, a 0.6 interior side yard setback was not 
permitted and in fact it is permitted um, with respect to the corner side yard or the corner site triangle um, if we go back to the site plan you will see uh, that the corner site triangle of three meters was uh, confirmed uh, with planning. Uh, the six meters and three meters, there's some discussion about when it's applicable and it's left up to the discretion of the planning department from what I understand uh, Mr. Hamilton's comments were when we determined that. Um, <clears throat> the six meters would in fact uh, be intruded on a little bit by that outermost uh, uh, corner of the proposed garage. However, we are uh, removing all of the vegetation that is presently inhibiting any view across that corner site triangle. And as mentioned, the proposed uh, driveway will never have any vegetation or anything that could uh, block that corner site uh, triangle uh, view. In our estimation, the proposal actually improves the existing situation. With respect to some of the comments that were made with a, share, uh, with a shared uh, uh, hedge, I think during discussions and whatever, wherever it ended up, um, that hedge, which is on the Northern property line from what I understand was in fact uh, requested uh, but I can't be sure by the owners in an effort to, uh, as a result of their discussions with their neighbors to the north. Um, with respect to the rear shed, I know a few uh, neighbors have made comments about that. Um, I uh, will accede to uh, Mr. Hamilton's understanding, which we confirmed with him a long time ago about the existing non-conformity or non-complying rights to rebuild that, that uh, uh, storage and access to the basement uh, within the existing non-complying envelope that it presently uh, occupies. In fact, this will be a benefit to everyone in the neighborhood too. But there is a right uh, for the owners to do that. In any event, we, we confirmed at least on two occasions with Mr. Hamilton that no variances were required to do that. Uh, so that so that shed, Mr. Hamel, does not encroach on the city-owned laneway. It does not, and I confirmed that again on our survey. Uh, there is the minimum setback right now on our property. It looks like it's over a foot. It's 0.34 meters from the uh, within the owner's property. Okay, and that's also indicated on our site plan there. But I think. Yeah. The, on the legal survey. Yep. With respect to the stairs, if you look more closely, and I know it's tough to see, but uh, the stairs from the deck actually land on a landing that is in the property, that is on the property, and there is a gate there that would have to be opened in order to permit access to the laneway. So we're not we're not landing in the land in the laneway. We're landing on the interior side yard to the north uh, west corner there, opening a gate and then going uh, on to stepping onto the public laneway. Does that gate open onto the laneway or does it open in, Mr. Hamel? Yeah, again, I apologize. The, the nature of these drawings, I guess, when they're reproduced for these slides is a little fuzzy, but the gate is very clearly shown to be opening into the property. All right. Because that could certainly create a problem if it opened out. Yeah, and, and, and frankly, I don't know how well traveled, certainly not with vehicles, uh, that laneway is. You can see on our drawing of the site plan here, there is a tree. Uh, that would prohibit a lot of access through that, that laneway. In any event, the gate opens. So this is, uh, in your estimation, this is not a city maintained laneway? I don't think so. Not from the photos that we've, that we've taken on a numerous occasions. We also walk by there uh, quite a bit. Our office is just on Main Street um, and uh, it doesn't look maintained. In fact, in the winter time, I think there are some pathways on the snow that if I recall, uh, leading into the laneway, but they're certainly not vehicular pathways. And along that laneway, there are accesses to parking? Nope. Yes? I don't think so. 
there's zero parking from the laneway. All the interior properties have access from uh, the roads, the public uh, right of way. All right. Anything, anything further, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hamel, regarding the, uh, the yeah. neighbor's comments? Sure. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, Mr. Uh, Young, um, uh, well, let me just say uh, that Susan uh, Irwing had uh, concerns about that shed being non-compliant. I thought that uh, Mr. Hamilton's uh, uh, response was pretty clear. Um, Mr. Young had uh, concerns about that landing onto the laneway and also that uh, in his experience, the um, neighbors that were contacted that we've shown in green uh, were in fact uh, not supportive. I confirmed with the owners that every one of those green dots were uh, placed on that map as a result of their signed letters of support. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And that's uh, that, so that that concludes your presentation, Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Hamel. Mr. Chair, is there? Uh, I think uh, the owners would like an opportunity to address some of these points as well. Is that is that permissible? Certainly, the property owners. Hello, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the time, and thank you to the committee. Uh, my name is Jeff Gordon. I'm one of the owners at 121 Evelyn, who are providing this application to you today. This is my wife, Anna Faihad Um uh, We'd like to thank, obviously, the committee. We'd like to thank Mr. Hamilton for his collaboration. I'd like to thank Jock and his team. And we'd also like to thank uh, all our neighbors, including those there today, um, for their, their comments and for the vast uh, amount of support that we've received for our application in the neighborhood. Uh, a little bit about us. We're longtime residents of the neighborhood. We've lived in the neighborhood for 16 years. Uh, we like to tell people that we've kind of done the tour. We've lived on Lees, Hawthorne twice, Simcoe, and now Evelyn. Um, as mentioned previously, we are, uh, we are a young growing family. We have a four-year-old boy uh, and a one-year-old daughter. And um, the, the genesis of this whole application, to be quite frank with you, is the fact that we do love this neighborhood with our dear hearts. We love the neighborhood. We love where we are. We want to stay here for a long time. And as parents, on this call, I think everybody can appreciate the desire to raise a family in the neighborhood that you've lived in for your basically entire adult life. Why are we doing this? Well, it was actually during the pandemic that our daughter was born and growing families like that, their needs change. And that's what happened to us. And unlike a lot of people who actually wanted to move out of the city center, wanted to move to suburbs, rural, and by nature become more car dependent, further away from the amenities, further away from the things that we love about the city and the neighborhood and the culture, we, we actually had the inverse decision. We said, we want to stay here and we want to firmly plant our roots for the future. I, I think that uh, after making that decision, we did think for a while, well, maybe we could do this on our own. We quickly learned that we were in above our heads, which is why we engaged Mr. Hamel and his, and his firm. We chose Mr. Hamel for a very specific reason. As mentioned, he's on Main Street. He understands very well the character of the neighborhood and the history. And we felt that it was appropriate to have somebody who had that connection to where we lived. We engaged Mr. Hamel. And yes, there are other parts of this eventual plan that we'd like to see come true on, on the plans that are presented ahead of you. Obviously, the only thing requiring variances relates to the garage. So let me speak to the garage right away because that is obviously the crux of the issue. We currently have two young children. We have daycares in Elmville Acres. We have activities. I play hockey goalie, for example. I have to lug my equipment around, you know, to the arenas, U of O. Um, but right now, unfortunately, crossing that street every day onto Evelyn because the parking is on the south side with young children has proved exceedingly dangerous. We've had too many close calls today to date. I don't think there's anybody on this call who, at the end of the day who would say that minor variances are worth more than a potentially catastrophic injury to a child. And everybody else on this call is a, is a, is a, is a parent too. And we ask them simply to be recogni recognizing of that fact. And that is really the ultimate crux of the issue. Yes, it's for us too. We don't like that either. Yes, it's for our elderly parents, but it's for our kids. There are small benefits, for example, to the ease of waste collection, to the ease of snow removal. We want to put an electric charger in our in our in our garage. 
um, that are ancillary benefits, but at the ultimate end of the day, it's about getting off the street, getting cars off the street. And as demonstrated previously, this is actually not adding any new vehicles outside of the house. Every vehicle that is gonna be parked in that garage will be fully within the garage because it's physically not possible to park in front. So there's no cars being added to the outside of the property, so to speak. I would like to speak specifically to, Mr. Chair, please, to our one neighbor, because of the configuration of our lot, we're on a lane, we're next to the laneway. We only have one shared lot line, which is with our, our, our neighbors at 20 Simcoe. And it's, we, we focused a very large amount of our time talking and working with them as from the moment this became an idea until it had concrete plans. As everybody can see on the plans in front of them, we're on revision 19. So this was far from rushed. We tried our best and we told Mr. Hamel right from day one, we want you to help come up with something that's gonna look like it fits into the character of the neighborhood. And I think you did a great job. We, we engaged Mr. Hamel in April, 2021. Uh, it's been a year and a half since this application was submitted. Once again, far from rushed. I would like to uh, tell the committee uh, that with regards to our neighbors at 20 Simcoe, we spoke to them right from the get-go when it was an idea, all the way up to providing them with concrete plans when it became a real idea. And on, as Mr. Uh, Peters mentioned, we did meet out front of our house in the fall of 2021 and he shook my hand after much deliberation because he didn't want rear windows, he didn't want a second story, he didn't want a rooftop patio, any of that. We didn't include any of that. We even agreed, although subsequently like he's changed his mind, to remove a hedge, that, to, to, to do a hedge between our properties to increase the privacy, unrelated to this application, but it's something we agreed on. He shook my hand, he said, we have no problem with your application anymore. And quite frankly, we were relieved because that meant that the neighbors behind, to the side and across all had no objection. So we really felt at that time we were comfortable proceeding with our application, which is what we did for the April hearing. When the question of whether a site triangle uh, issue was still possible during the April hearing, once again, in an abundance of caution um, and uh, out of a respect for the committee and the process, we withdrew our applications just to ensure that there were no question marks with regards to that corner site triangle. The fact that, the, that our neighbor at 20 Simcoe uh, changed his mind and, and did submit a, a letter of concern after the fact is obviously his right and we totally respect that. We only wish that subsequent to that handshake and that word that he gave us that he'd come and spoken to us first and that's all we would have asked. Thanks for right. the inputs. We have a vast majority of support and with that I see Mr. Wilder asking for me to shut up so I will. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I think the committee is going to reserve on this application. We have heard uh, we've heard from the applicant, we have heard from the applicant's agent, we have heard from concerned neighbors, we have heard from the community association, and we have uh, further discussions before we uh, render a decision. So we'll reserve on this application. Thank you all, and uh, the application decision will be released in ten days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I believe that concludes the, the agenda for the 7th of September. So we will uh, thank you very much for participating and we 